A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the Pharisees, I am going away, and you will look for me, but you will die in your sin. Where I am going, you cannot come. So the Jews said, He is not going to kill himself, is he? Because he said, Where I am going, you cannot come. He said to them, You belong to what is below, I belong to what is above. You belong to this world, but I do not belong to this world. That is why I told you that you will die in your sins. For if you do not believe that I am, you will die in your sins. So they said to him, Who are you? Jesus said to them, What I told you from the beginning. I have much to say about you in condemnation, but the one who sent me is true. And what I heard from him I tell the world. They did not realize that he was speaking to them of the Father. So Jesus said to them, When you lift up the Son of Man, then you will realize that I am, and that I do nothing on my own, but I say only what the Father taught me. The one who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone, because I always do what is pleasing to him. Because he spoke this way, many came to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. This week I'm continuing my reflections on the daily readings, Tuesday and Wednesday. And uh, the Gospel that we just heard is, is a really interesting Gospel for us to reflect on. Jesus said, when you lift up the Son of Man, then you will realize that I am. He's using a kind of a play on words, you know, I am. In Hebrew, of course, is the name of God. And so he's calling himself God without his listeners understanding that. But he's saying when you lift up the Son of Man, then you realize that he is, that, that this is God. You know, and, and when did they lift up the Son of Man? When did they lift Jesus up? When they put him on a cross. Now look at this uh, along with our, our first reading from today's Mass. The first reading is from the book of Numbers. In the first reading, we see that the Israelites complain against God in the desert, something that they're quite, uh, they're quite familiar with, right? They complain against God in the desert, and so God sends these seraph serpents, and the seraph serpents bite them, and many of them die. Well, when they turn to Moses uh, to ask God to pray for them, Moses does, does so, and God instructs Moses to uh, make a serpent and mount it to a pole. And, and so he does this. He makes this bronze serpent and mounts it to a pole. And all of the, all those who have been bit by the serpents who look at this bronze serpent on the pole are healed. This is a powerful image of the cross. You know, the, the serpent for the Israelites in the desert, this seraph serpent, was a terrifying sign, a sign of death and suffering, Right? But Moses turned this terrifying sign at the instruction of God into a healing remedy. Think of the cross. In Jesus' time, the cross was the most terrifying instrument of torture that anyone could have conceived of. It was a, a brutal, slow kind of torture. And it was incredibly uh, humiliating. It was, it was seen as, as this just intimidation of the Roman Empire. Intimidation by the Roman Empire. And so uh, you, what we see on, on the cross, when Jesus died on the cross, was he transformed this instrument of torture, this terrifying uh, uh, sight into our salvation, our remedy. I encourage you to place, uh, to place crosses around your house. I, I know people who have a crucifix in their office at work. Perhaps you can do the same. Uh, perhaps you can put a, a cross in your kitchen. Or in the hall as people come in. Put it in your bedroom. Uh, wherever you can, put, the, put a crucifix in your house to remember what Jesus did for you. And when you find yourself in moments of temptation, when you find yourself in moments of discouragement and struggle, look at that cross and find strength in Jesus. We remember in this Lenten season uh, that a as we prepare for Jesus' resurrection, that he gave his life for us. We remember his glorious sacrifice, his offering on the cross. And we pray that we may unite ourselves to Jesus' sacrifice in our daily lives. That we may look to his cross as a sign of our salvation.